Hey, hey, now welcome. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station, and we are creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time, and that means you. Yep, it means you, and let me tell you something. We are still grinding. My word of wisdom for the day was to go and get exactly what God has for you. Do not settle for less because when you settle for less, you get even less than that. How about that? Yes. When you settle for less, you don't get what you settled for. You get something much (laughs) worse than what you settled for. So since you've got to do something anyway, why don't you go and get exactly what God has for you? Go and get everything that he has in store for you. Go and get the things that your, that your heart dreams of, that your, that your eyes can see, that your mind can think of, go and get them. And so that leads me to uh, what we're going to talk about. And, and we've got to deal with this because I haven't dealt with this much. Uh, we've had Uh, so many topics on the wealth spectrum uh, to deal with. And uh, I certainly wanted to be sure that I was not only in a position of power, but that I was in a sustainable position of power uh, before I began to really, really delve into this topic. And this is what I want to talk about. I want us to talk about credit. That's right. Respecting, repairing, and regaining our credit. You see, Back in the day, I will admit, I used to get the mortgages for everybody with bad credit. We would figure out a way if you had bankruptcy foreclosure, if you came to me, I'd figure out a way to get you in a house. Now, you'd have to work for it. I put you on the mortgage approval plan and you got a house in three months, six months, nine months. You all know about my client that I had with Mon- with Monica Poland, Monica and David Poland of Remax. And this particular client had four bankruptcies and two foreclosures. And uh, she came to me. Nobody else would work with her. I don't even think nobody believed that it was even possible. I don't even think she thought it was possible. And I looked at that file and I prayed about it. Literally, I don't even think I was a praying person at that time. But I prayed over that. And uh, (laughs) I prayed over that file. And then eventually I saw the strategy. I was able to put it together and I was able to tell her what to do. And yes, so I have many stories like that. Um, I remember when my husband and I bought our first house, um, we had had uh, a fly, a fire and a flood. It impacted uh, our ability to pay our bills. And so when we bought our first home, I had to write a letter of explanation. Um, I couldn't go on the mortgage at all because my credit was just so far in the gutter from college. You all remember, I went to college. I got 50,000 credit cards, couldn't pay anybody. When a creditor was a call and say, Lynn, can you borrow the money? I'd say, can I borrow it from you? So I was still living uh, in the aftermath of that. You see, you must uh, deal with the consequences of your actions. And so I had to deal with that. But my husband, on the other hand, I had excellent credit until I showed up and started spending money the wrong way and then started spending it the right way. And then it was time to buy a house. And so there we were. Um, so I had to write a letter of explanation. We got approved and I went on to get so many people with credit issues approved for mortgages. But let me tell you this. I want us to stop looking for the programs for bad credit. That's what I want us to do. I want us to use our power. You see, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, God will bless you exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever ask or imagine according to his power at work in you. So it's the according to part. You've heard me say this many times. So where's the according to part right now? The according to part that I'm talking about right now is how I choose to pay my bills that I know good and well I owe. How we choose to pay for the things that we have asked for, how we choose to honor our word. Because the Bible literally says that basically your credit and your word go hand in hand. And uh, we want to make sure that we value uh, not only our word, but that we value the position of other people who have uh, invested in us or who've taken a chance on us or who've given us a a pair of... uh, Victoria's Secret at the Victoria's Secret store, whatever it is. Yeah, because they offering credit cards everywhere. Who needs credit cards, uh, credit for underwear? Come on now. But they're doing it everywhere. And so what I want us to do is I want us to get our power back. Okay. And this comes through respecting, 
repairing and protecting our credit. And for those who are really serious about what I'm going to teach and what we're going to be dealing with, I have the 700 Credit Club, and that's for everybody who's either in the 700s or higher or trying to get there, okay? <laughs> right? So I've come, overcome it all. I've overcome um, two bankruptcies. I've, over, I've overcome, uh, you know, just a massive amount of things. And so everyone in my house has 700 credit scores. Everybody. Everybody has 700 credit scores. I didn't allow my children to start out the way that I did. And I'm prayerful that you will not allow your children to, to either start out uh, the, on the wrong path or um, just veer off onto the wrong path. So I keep a lookout for everybody. I am the credit police in the Richardson household. Okay. I am the credit police. I'm looking at anything, an inquiry that came uh, through, um, a balance that is too high, um, a debt that somebody's saying that you owe. When somebody says you owe them, speak to them, speak to them. So we're going to talk about it, respecting, repairing, and protecting your credit. And, and the first thing that I want you to, I want to talk about in terms of just the respecting part of it, uh, the respecting part of it is key because it's, it's when we, um, believe, I think either someone has either done us wrong or if we, we believe that our immediate need right now is more important than the need of someone that we owe. Let's think about that, that our immediate need right now is more important than the need of someone that we know. So certainly life comes at us. Certainly life hits us. Certainly life gives us, um, you know, things that we don't expect. But even in those instances, when we are faced with things that we don't expect, we still have an obligation or, or we should. You know, the Bible says treat people how you want to be treated. I say treat your creditors as you'd have your debtors treat you and just communicate. Because the last time Pookie called to borrow $50 from you and did not pay you back on Friday as promised and did not answer the phone that your $50 helped to keep on, you wanted to kill him. You tell everybody, listen, it's not the money, it's the principle. And that's the point. So what I want us to do is I want us to get our power. And I want us to look at this from a whole entirely different perspective. And I want us to look at this um, from a position of winning because I know that there was a time when I thought I could not win. I didn't think that there was anything that could ever be done for me. And I thought I'd have to just suffer forever. I thought I'd be 90, you know, before uh, my credit would be in a position where I could comfortably say, yes, okay, this is it. And I am doing something about it. And uh, God is good. And um, but I am doing the work. And so I want you to do the work. So we're going to talk about respecting and the respect piece is simply, you know what it is. You know, today in today's age, the millennials say you don't get respect until you earn it. But that's not how I grew up. The way I grew up is that you respect people on GP. You respect your elders on GP. You respect uh, the, the lady who lives down the street. You know, she might be mean and might not want you to play basketball in front of her house or behind her house. But at the end of the day, you're going to respect her simply on GP. So I want us to go back to the basics. I want us to go back to the beginning. And I want, I want us to go back to thinking about what it really means to respect our credit, right? To respect our credit. And that means that we honor the dollar. The dollar has something that it wants to do. The dollar has something that it wants to uh, accomplish. Um, and that thing that it wants to accomplish is it wants to work harder for you than you can work for it. That's right. Money wants to work harder for you than you can work for it. But you've got to give it the right energy and you've got to deal with it appropriately. So you've heard me say one plus one equals two. Uh, if your stuff adds up to 10, it'll never get in. Well, when it comes to your credit, once again, treat your creditors as you'd have your debtors treat you, not how they treat you, right? How you would want them to treat you. So the respect piece is important. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM. The Talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. And we are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, one dime at a time. And that means you, we have to take a break for traffic and weather. We'll be right back with these tips for getting your credit straight. WVON. More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the Talk of Chicago. 1690 WVON. WVON. 
Hey, hey, now welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. And we are creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dime at a time and one dollar at a time. And that means you. And today we're talking about respecting, repairing and regaining your credit. And uh, if you are sick and tired of your credit score being two, three, four hundred, I don't even know if it can be 200, but it feels like it when it's really low and you can't do anything. If you're sick and tired of being stuck in the 600s, then I want you to go to LynnRichardson.com and join the 700 Credit Club because we are taking over. See, as I said previously, uh, coming out of this uh, season, you will either be a millionaire, a billionaire or a witness. That's right. Millionaires are being made every single day during this time because this is the season of not only multiple streams of income, but innovative opportunities. And so that's why it's good to sit still so that you can think about what's next. You can think about what's uh, strategically uh, in order for you to do next when it comes to your family, your faith, your finances, uh, and all of those things that are going to contribute to your financial freedom. And so credit is certainly one of those things. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 1 says a good name is more valuable than great riches to be esteemed is better than silver and gold. So your good name will get you places that money cannot. When money runs out, your good name will have people um, agreeing to partner with you. I, I'm a case in point. You know, I have uh, been very, very blessed to have been working with Russell Simmons and MC Light and, you know, Sheila E. I work with her and her foundation. And I've worked with so many great people and um, I've served. And then when it was time for me to make a move, to make a boss move, um, guess what? The CMO, the chief marketing officer of, of Ron, Russell Simmons uh, firms for the past, you know, 100 years um, is now working on my team, helping me with my brand. And so it was because of my good name. I didn't have money. I didn't have that kind of money to work with, but I had a good name and I was committed and I was consistent. So your good name is what we want to work on right now. So I remember when I was literally kicked in the face uh, with what I needed to do with my credit. And uh, believe it or not, it was when I was uh, doing an episode right here on WVON, um, the real uh, deal in real estate. And um, I read something um, that Iyanla Van Zant shared, and it literally um, just changed my whole entire way that I was dealing with money. Um, it changed it forever. It forced me to look at it from a different perspective, and it forced me to really face myself. And so I always say you cannot fix what you will not face. And so before I give you these tips, the things that everybody can do to start to get your credit in order, um, before I share that with you, I want to share with you what she said to me. Uh, what she said to us in one of her books. Uh, Iyanla Vantan said, when you are experiencing financial chaos, your primary goal is to be free of debt. This requires discipline and structure. You may rebel against the notion of discipline because it feels as if you are being punished, but you must realize that you are punishing yourself. When you live beyond your means, if you spend without a budget, if you live without a plan, you are punishing yourself and your creditors. When you are in debt, spending money without discipline means you are spending other people's money. You are withholding from the flow. You are blocking your abundance. If lack of discipline put you in debt, only discipline will get you out. As hard as it may be, as unfair as it may seem, your money is not your money when you are in debt. Give what you have to those whom you owe if you want your money to be rightfully yours. So it's real difficult you know, I, I tell people in, in business all the time, they say, well, Lynn, is this free? No, it's not free. Do you, why do you want things for free? If you have a business, is all your stuff free? Everybody has to pay for something. The only way we are able to participate in this world and to actually be able to come up is if everybody pays for something. Everybody has to pay. Money has to circulate. So I don't even want the free stuff. I don't want any free people uh, providing services for the things that I want to blow up to seven, eight, nine figures. Do you want free people helping you create nine figures? No. So if that's the case, if you want stuff to come in for you, then you've got to put it out the right way. So the number one thing that I'm going to talk about 
in terms of respecting your credit, your credit, the number one thing that everybody's going to do, if you're trying to get your credit to the next level, you're trying to come out of the gutter. I have been there several times, more times than I care to revisit um, to the point that I just kind of didn't even pay attention anymore. And then I could not ignore it. And then later on in life, I let people, you know, co-sign and things like that. Or and then that got me in trouble. So I've been there, done it. All. So here's what you need to do. The first thing you have to do if you're going to respect something, you have to know what it is. So you're going to write everything down. Write everything you owe. Write it all. Just write it all down. I know it's hard. I remember the first time I filed bankruptcy in 1999, um, I was going through a closet or a room full of mail and I had been ignoring it probably for about two years. Um, I was a young wife and mother and trying to adjust and I wasn't making the kind of money I wanted to make. I wasn't in the career I wanted to be in. So I just kind of ignored everything. Yeah, you know, we've all been there, done that. If you haven't, if you you haven't acknowledged it, then I don't know. But that's where I was. And so I finally woke up and said, girl, get yourself together. And I went in this room and I promise you, if those bills didn't almost kill me, because every time I opened something, I cried. Because there were things that I opened that I literally, had I even opened it, dealt with it, looked at it, I could have prevented it from happening. And so can you. You cannot eliminate your problems by ignoring them. As a matter of fact, the longer you take to manage a problem, the more difficult it becomes to manage. Okay? So you got to manage it either way. But the longer you take, it becomes that much more difficult. Take your health. If you do not manage your health, it will become, it will get out of control. If you do not manage your weight, it will get out of control. And so it's the same thing with your bills. So go and get everything. Write it down. Go right now. Go get a journal, a spiral notebook, something, anything, and then go through everything. Go through your cell phone, go through your email, go through your mail, go through your calendar. Everything you own, you owe. Everybody you owe. I want you to write it down. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I'm your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. And we are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, one dime at a time. We have to take a break for news, traffic, and weather. We'll be right back. WVON. More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I'm your host, Lynn Richardson, and we are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And that means you. Okay. You know, we are always talking about something exciting, but sometimes something a little difficult to deal with. And anytime I have any subject matter uh, that may cause us a little bit of fear or anxiety, I am here to tell you that we always have someone to help us navigate this space and to navigate it with power, to navigate it with truth, and to navigate it with effective, effective practices. So without further ado, I have to tell you that it's always such a pleasure to have my partners at Chase here with me. And today we have none other than my friend, Jared Evans, community manager with Chase. Jared, welcome back to the round table. Thank you, Dr. Lynn. You know, I am always excited to join you. So I'm glad to be back. Yes. And let me tell you this topic that we have to discuss today, I'm telling you, we need you. You know, we understand that managing credit cards effectively can sometimes feel like walking a financial tightrope. The good news is that learning effective credit card management is relatively easy once you know the basics. And it's, you know, it's so surprising to me, Jared, that the things that we are faced with, and that's all of us on a daily basis, it seems like they can overwhelm us, but you've got the tools and the skills and basically the history to help us get here. So you're here to help us simplify the complex world of credit card management for everybody, whether you're a credit card novice, whether you are a seasoned pro, because there are many people out there who, you know, during the pandemic or at some point in time, they said, you know what, I was debt free, my cash flow was good. But then I ran into a situation 
And now it seems like things are out of control. So these insights will help everyone. So get pen and paper to control your financial destiny. So let's just get right to it, Jared. Why is it important to carefully manage your credit cards? Well, it's a great question. And really, I feel like managing your credit card effectively is essential for maintaining a strong financial foundation. It directly influences your credit score, obviously, affecting your access to loans, to interest costs, and financial flexibility. You know, responsible management helps you avoid high interest debt, which all of us want to stay away from, maximizing credit card perks, and safeguard against unauthorized transactions. So by controlling spending and paying on time, you can harness the benefits of credit cards while minimizing potential pitfalls, ultimately securing a more prosperous financial future. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, when we get into a space and sometimes people are dealing with uh, problems at home or problems at work, and it seems just so easy to go and grab that credit card. And I'm so happy that you're talking about this because it's all going to force us to just take a step and and think uh, a little bit longer and a little bit more strategically about making some of these decisions. So what are some of the most important things to keep in mind when managing credit cards? Well, really, you know, effective credit card management involves a combination of daily, monthly, and even some occasional or intentional steps. These include paying on time, uh, Dr. Lynn, you know, budgeting and developing good spending habits, uh, routinely checking your credit card statements, and maintaining a low credit utilization ratio. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but I love talking about low credit utilization ratios. (laughs) Ooh, you know, that's the one right there. And I think it's something... (laughs) Once you give us these tools, people are going to find, you know, they say, well, it's easier said than done. Well, no, once you know exactly what to do, when to do it, what moves to make, you're going to find that you have so much more power. So, Jared, again, just so glad to have you here. Always glad to have you here giving us, you know, the tools that as a community manager for Chase, you are looking to empower people, not just coming in and depositing their check in the bank, but yes, how they right. are managing their entire financial life. So thank you always for this. So tell us more about paying on time, because this is something a lot of people struggle with. Well, you know, Dr. Lynn, paying your credit card bill on time is not just crucial. It's the foundation of responsible credit card management. It's like the bedrock upon which your financial house is built. You know, late payments can have a domino effect on your financial life. When you consistently pay on time, you're actively building up your credit score. A higher credit score opens doors to better interest rates on loans, mortgages, and even lower insurance premiums. It can also make it easier to secure rental properties or land a job. On the flip side, failing to pay on time can lead to a cascade of negative consequences. A lower credit score means higher interest rates when you borrow money, costing you more in the long run. You may also face late payment fees and penalty interest rates, adding extra financial strain. But it doesn't end there. Late payments can linger on your credit report for up to seven years, staining your financial reputation. This can make it difficult to obtain credit or favorable terms in the future. So paying on time isn't just about avoiding late fees. It's about safeguarding your financial future and ensuring you have the best possible financial options available to you. You know, I'm excited about this, Dr. Lynn. (laughs) This is good. Unfortunately, what happens, because as you all know, I have been there, done that. I wasn't just avoiding paying my credit cards on time. During those early days of college, I just wasn't paying them. It was like on time would have been better than what I was doing, which was absolutely nothing. So if you are (laughs) out there and you are facing this, trust me, you are not the only one. You are not alone and you cannot fix what you will not face. And, you know, really the problem that I thought I was avoiding, I was actually creating 50 more problems on top of the one that I was avoiding. Yes. It just spiraled completely out of control. And I don't really think we think that through. We don't really think about if I do this, 
then this is going to happen. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. It's going to affect this. It's going to affect this, that, and everything else. And I just have to say here also, Jared, you know, it's very difficult right now that even the rental market, we, yes. you know, we talk about home ownership and all kinds of things for our listeners to build wealth. But for those who aren't able to buy right now, it, with that credit score, it is really, I've seen people who cannot rent, but they can buy. Yeah. And, and, and the rental market is, is just very, very sensitive right now. So it's so important, everybody, um, to make sure you are uh, listening to this um, and then understanding that there's a community around you and, and Chase is doing a great job of help, helping us make, get access to that community. So Jared, we've chatted before about why creating and maintaining a budget is good for our financial health. But why is a budget good for credit card management? Well, you know, I was thinking about this and I said, you know, it's, it's like a three prong, right? Uh, approach. You know, have you ever, you know, had a bread with no peanut butter and jelly? But if you got bread, peanut butter, and jelly, you really got something good, right? I'm an old peanut butter and jelly lover. So I like to use adages when I'm out here uh, uh, talking to, about finances. And really, you can't talk savings and budget without credit. You can't talk credit without saving and budgeting. They go hand in hand. So really creating and adhering to a budget, it's the cornerstone of effective credit card management because it serves as a proactive financial strategy that empowers you to make informed decisions about your spending and ensures that you stay within your means. I cannot stress that enough. It helps you to stay within your means. That's the biggest takeaway. A budget is essentially a financial roadmap that allows you to see the bigger picture of your income and your expenses. It provides a clear overview of where your money is coming from and where it's going. You know, without a budget, it's easy to lose track of your spending and inadvertently accumulate credit card debt because you spend now, pay later, you kind of forget. But by adhering to a budget, you proactively manage your finances, reducing the likelihood of overspending and relying on credit cards to cover your expenses. This includes having an emergency fund for unexpected expenses like car maintenance or home repairs. And, and I can tell you, really, most of us as Americans do not have enough built up in our savings for that emergency, which I'll stress again. You need to have that savings built up for emergencies. You know, that's a that's an excellent, excellent point. And it's also important to be careful about using the credit card as the emergency fund. You know, Absolutely. Unfortunately, you know, there's so many people who didn't have cash available for an emergency, but they did have the credit card available for an emergency, which if something goes wrong, if you, your furnace goes out or something to that effect, yes, of course. But what, what then happens is the card that you're now, that you were once holding for an emergency becomes something that you're using regularly and then the payments get out of control. So it's important yeah. to keep that in mind as well. Thank you so much for this. Absolutely. So let's discuss credit card statements and credit usage ratio. This is really the big, big, big thing here. Why is it important to keep an eye on these? The credit card statement, don't you? I know you get the credit card statement, you put it in the stack of mail, but it's really <laughs> important to pay attention to that statement and your credit usage ratio. Talk to us about that, Jared. No, absolutely. And I've been there and done that, piled them up and not looked at them. But reality is you gotta, you have to check things because there's so much going on right now with fraud and various things. So I, I always tell people regularly reviewing your credit card statement goes beyond just basic expense tracking. It has a ton of other benefits. You can use your statement to check that your budget matches your spending and your lifestyle, detect fraud, as I just mentioned, and ensure accuracy, foster financial awareness, and maintain essential documentation. By making this a consistent part of your financial routine, you not only stay in control of your finances, but you also enhance your financial security and responsibility, right? And so maintaining a low credit utilization ratio, which we talked about a little bit earlier, typically under 30% or 30% or less of your credit card limit. So basically $1,000, you don't want to spend more than 300 or leave more than 300 on that card past the 30 days. 
That's that 30% ratio, you know, if you will. It's super important because it significantly impacts your credit score and overall financial health, right? And you may not notice it right away, but it does have an impact. A low ratio signals responsible credit management enhances your credit worthiness, making it easier to secure favorable terms for your loans and credit. It also reduces interest costs and financial strain while fostering a more prosperous financial future. And so I really believe in that rule more than any other. Keep it under 30. And everybody, please remember, this is so important. The payment due date and the statement closing date are two different things. You need to pay attention to yes. both. The due date, you must make the minimum payment by. The statement closing date, you want to make sure that that balance is under the 30% that Jared is just talking about. Don't turn that dial. We have to take a break. We'll be right back. WVON. More of the Millionaire's Roundtable coming up on the Talk of Chicago. 1690 WVON. Welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I'm your host, Lynn Richardson, and we are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And that means you. Let me tell you why this is important. Let's say the payment is due on the first. You make the payment on the first. You're thinking this is all good. But then you go out and you make some charges on the second and the third. And those charges that you make on the second and the third now bring your balance up. And the statement doesn't close until the 5th. So on the 5th, what's reflected is that you actually have a higher balance than you had the date that the payment was due. And so whatever the balance is on the statement closing date is what gets reported to the credit bureau. The lender or the creditor is going to report, yes, Jared paid on time. Yes, Lynn paid on time. But look at that balance. Yep. And I am signed up for a credit monitoring service. Yes, everyone. I monitor my credit every day. Let me tell you who else's credit I monitor. I monitor my credit, my husband's credit, and the credit of my three grown daughters. Okay? <laughs> every day. All I love right? it. I love it. I, I monitor everybody's credit. And when I said every day, I mean every single day. So if something changes on that credit report, and we've talked about these other things, I'm not going to go into that too much today identity theft and all those things I'm yes. monitoring every day. And I've seen where a balance that was a little higher because I was traveling, I was on vacation and I'm using the card while I'm on vacation because I find it more convenient to use a credit card when I'm traveling than a debit card. And so that balance was a little higher and my score dropped 20 points. I almost fell off the plane. I, I was yeah. like, wait, what happened? <laughs> And so yeah. it may be recognized, oh, wait a minute, I forgot about the statement date. I wasn't paying attention. So as you're tracking and monitoring and you're putting all of these tips and practices, what I do is I put in my calendar, I have my payment due date and I have my statement closing date. And I have a notice and alert set for two days before each so that I'm monitoring those things. Now, I'm going to yeah. give you all this last little tip here as well. Now, if you've got payments all over the map, all over the month, your life will be a little crazy. So I have all of my bills due on one or two days out of the month, not all month, only one or two days. So I'm able to monitor those things. So as you can tell, Jared, I was excited about this question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you're absolutely right. You can even call and ask your creditors to change the due date. They'll do it for you. You don't have to be yes. shy about it. And, and so that's a great call out. I like that having that strategy of paying it one or two days instead of all over the place uh, throughout the month. Yeah, just one or two days. That, and I say too, because for my listeners who are like, Lynn, we've been trying to get down to one day. Really, I only pay bills one day out of the month, everything. And so psychologically for me, what it did is money goes out one day and it comes in the other 29 days. And for the year, oh. that means money goes out 12 days and it comes in for 353 days. That's what I'm oh, focused preach, on. Dr. Lynn. Come on now. Oh. That's some next level <laughs> stuff right there. Come on now. So okay. yeah, so that's what it does. And so many people, Jared, told me how it changed them emotionally. It just changes the whole game. So 
definitely think about that. This, uh, the credit card statement and that credit card usage. Thank you, Jared, for just reminding us of that because we hear it. We don't really want to talk about it, but it is the cornerstone, one of the cornerstones of making sure that credit score stays intact. Is there anything else, Jared, that you want our listeners to know? Well, you know, finally, I'll, I'll say that, you know, really effective credit card management can reduce financial stress and anxiety. And we all need less stress and less anxiety. Let's just be truthful about it, especially when it comes to finances. Additionally, a good credit score achieved through responsible credit or credit cards use can boost your confidence. It can, and we talk, you just said that, you know, it makes you feel better. I love that analogy that you use and it's something that I can even adopt. You know, provide peace of mind. It gives you that that sense of, you know, everything is going to be okay. In case there is an emergency, you still know you have that good credit and, and that you can lean on it if you need it. And it improves relationships, obviously. And when you think about marriage or any sort of relationship, whatever it may be, that can be strained by financial conflict. So having that effect of credit card management really de-stresses you. And if you're not sure how to get started, Check with your bank, right? There's all kind of available resources. We at Chase, we offer something called uh, Chase Credit Journey. And, and really, it's an online resource to help you track your credit score and keep an eye on significant changes, right? So that you're not hit with surprises. You talked about always watching it. And, and these are great habits to have. If you want to access this free information and tools and resources to help you support your financial health, we want you to visit us at www.chase.com forward slash financial goals. And, and the last thing I'll say is we as community managers, there's five of us that cover the Chicagoland area. We are constantly putting on debt and credit card management seminars in the community centers, in the branch. And so we always invite folks to go into the branch, establish that relationship with the banker, ask them, where's the community manager holding the next seminar? And we want to see you out there. This is something, Dr. Lynn, that we love that you're doing across the country. And in many of our branches across the country, they can go in and find that we're doing a, a seminar to help them navigate these financial, you know, stresses that we have. So I'm just excited and thank you again for the opportunity. You know, I love coming on your show. Let me tell you, I love having you here and I love having Chase just always bring us topics that these may seem like usual topics, but we're not dealing with them in a usual way. We're dealing with them in a yeah. way that really relates and resonates. And let me tell you, I get emails every day and my listeners say, I listen to you every single day. And I think you are becoming a little more popular than me, which is good. <laughs> They're like, what are you bringing Jared back? And what are you bringing Pamela? Like they actually are getting to know us as a family working together. And wow, this is I something I, I have to say. This is so important because we are now coming up on the time of year, Jared, where people start to experience even more financial anxiety yes. with the holidays, with the transition of the weather, with mm. so many things. And, you know, sometimes people just give up. And, you know, when the fourth quarter is approaching or, and they, they yeah. say, well, you know what, I'm just going to forget everything. And then when the new year starts, then I'll get everything together. Yeah. I'm just going to say, I'm so happy that we are taking the time, you know, because sometimes during the summer months, people are moving. They're not really listening. Everybody's having a good time, but now people are listening and they yeah. need us. They need us right now. So thank you for being here. Thank you for always giving us the tips and the tools that we need to succeed. Hey, everybody, manage those credit cards. You cannot fix what you will not face. And if you are ready to face, I want you to call Chase. I had to put my little rhyme in this. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lynn, you're dropping nuggets this morning. You always are, but this is this is nice. If you're ready to face it, come to Chase. <laughs> Come on now. Come and let us chase it. If you're ready to face it. I love it. I love it. Okay, I this love is it. so wonderful. Thank you so much, Jared, for being here. And I can't wait to have you back. We have so much more to talk about. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Lynn. 
You have been listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, our favorite radio station. I want you to follow me on social media at Lynn Richardson. Follow this show at Lynn Millionaire. Go and get help at asklynn.org because I want to help you take it to the next level. Guess what? I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.